So scene heat, uh, today we're going to go over a quick uh, kind of tutorial uh, about scene heat and how to use it. So the first thing is you need to go to sceneheat.cambiumnetworks.com, choose 2.0. It will ask you to log in with the Cambium SSO. If you don't have a Cambium SSO, you can register any email, go to support.cambiumnetworks.com. Um, I'm already logged in here, but basically there would be a register button right in the upper right hand corner. Uh, Cambium SSO is the same uh, login that you would use for any other uh, Cambium tool like CM Maestro or Link Planner online. Um, so once you're logged in, we have it set up in kind of a hierarchy. So we have projects in general. Most customers will only have a single project. Then we have sites uh, and then under sites you can configure radios and run predictions. Uh, so let me go over kind of the interface. Um, this is more from a pre-qualification kind of standpoint, more for like a customer service representative, and then we'll kind of go more into the engineering uh, side of it as well. Uh, so when you log in, it, it should pop up all of your, you know, you, you select your project, it should pop up all of your towers and then all of the predictions. And the way that Scene Heat is set up is you can um, you're paying the subscription service, you're paying for the site for the tower, and you get unlimited radios added to that, and you also get unlimited predictions. Uh, because we are unlimited on those two, we, we do limit in that we don't let you move a site once it's placed. Uh, otherwise, you could just purchase a single site and plan your entire network. Um, but that's kind of a key differentiator, I think, between us and some of the other tools. Uh, let's go in here. Let me, I'm going to turn these off. You can enable and disable predictions on the right hand side here. You can see where we have LIDAR processed by clicking this globe. Um, if you zoom out too much, it will actually just uh, disappear. It, it only works at certain zoom levels, but um, and until we have LIDAR data processed, you can't adequately plan for an area. And so um, I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but this is, uh, you wouldn't be able to plan in this area and you would need to contact our support for us to process the LIDAR. So let me turn that off. Okay, I'm going to turn on new tower, all sectors. So uh, here's an example of coverage. What you'll notice is, um, you know, it, it's different colors here. This is a heat map where red is the hottest and blue is the coldest. You can adjust your signal strength on the fly. So what we see is we actually, we have three different sectors here, a north facing, an east facing, and a west facing with no south facing sector. Um, also, while we're here, let's talk about the controls uh, on this side as well. So this is your height slider. This is from a remote install height. So this is like the SM height on a customer premise. And uh, your your tower configuration is always going to stay static, but this here is your, your install height. And so you can take this and on the fly move it. We pre-process every height from zero feet to 80 feet, so you don't have to go and reprocess it. This makes it really easy to go to a customer house, uh, see the coverage at, you know, 10 feet above the ground or 20 feet above the ground or maybe two feet above rooftop or um, 80 feet, you know, even up to 80 feet uh, foot tower. And, and so here, this is your height slider. It can be referenced to either height above ground or height above clutter. I'm going to zoom in to a location here so we can kind of evaluate this. So, you know, right now we're set to 10 feet above ground. And, and so here's everywhere you could see the tower. We're also set to line of sight only. Uh, line of sight means that, you know, we're modeling the Fresnel zone. And if there is less than 60% of the Fresnel zone clear, um, then we're not showing any coverage. And so there's some sort of obstruction in the way. So the idea being that you could go stand at these points, I, I guess maybe lower it to, maybe five feet, you could go and stand at these points and, and you should be able to visually see the tower, but then also line of sight is going to be clear as well. And, and you can see the accuracy of seeing heat. I mean, we're modeling each individual tree based on LIDAR data. It's casting shadows. Um, it's not a uniform simulated uh, type of clutter, but rather everything in clutter is um, from a 3D scan of the real world. Uh, and, and so here we are with your height five feet above ground. You could also do a height above clutter. You know, one of the one of the difficult things is you start moving into homes and customer calls you up and you know maybe it's only a one story home and it's 10 feet tall or maybe it's you know something like this. These look like monster homes. Um, maybe they're 30 feet tall. In fact we can actually click and see and heat and it will tell us the height. Yeah this 
this rooftop is actually 39 feet tall. So you're not trying to uh, look at the satellite imagery and try to determine how tall it is. Rather, that's all built in and you can actually just do height above clutter instead. And so now this reference is on the top of the roof. And so five feet above the rooftop, or maybe you're just doing a J mount uh, two feet on top of the roof. Here's everywhere on the roof that you can actually go back and see the tower. Uh, this kind of to show kind of the power of seeing heat here. The tower that we're discussing here, I'm going to click on it here, select this new new site. It's in this direction. And what you can see is the pitch of the roof that faces the tower is covered. The pitch that doesn't face the tower isn't covered, except for kind of on this end where we're, we're able to shoot over by just a little bit. As we raise this up, it starts to cover over that peak. And this is just the accuracy of the LIDAR modeling it in 3D. Um, one of the incredible values of, of using really high resolution data when we do this. Uh, and again, it, everything is modeled separately. So that last tower, uh, the last home was 39 feet. This home's 42 feet. We can click on trees. Here's a 21 foot tall tree. 35 foot tall tree and go to another you know part of town where the buildings aren't so tall only 27 feet uh, so it's modeling everything accurately um, what i have shown here is you know 22 feet above clutter we can switch back to height above ground and we don't just show height uh, line of sight only we can also show non line of sight as well and so click this button here and now uh, non line of sight is being shown uh, and the purpose here is that you could let me turn this off for a second. Um, you, you could go to a home. Let's say we want to cover this home. You could say, OK, in a, in a perfect situation, we'd want to use a J mount. So two foot install above the rooftop. And in a perfect situation, we'd want to do line of sight only. And so you can have all of this set and slide this up. Uh, and so there's there's no coverage here. Maybe you're willing to do a tripod and go up to 10 feet. Uh, there's still no coverage. Uh, maybe you're willing to do non line of sight. So you turn on non line of sight with a tripod um, and you can also come through here and. And set your cutoffs for your signal strength, too. So this part of the rooftop here is going to be the strongest spot. Um, and if we click here, we can actually see we're going to get about a neg 60. If we we're able to go 16 feet above the rooftop, we would get a neg 56. Um, but here here we are only about um, 10 feet above the rooftop and we're getting an 60. Uh, this analysis tool lets you know the all all of the various uh, towers in the area and so in this case non line of sight at this install height 10 feet above rooftop we have this new tower all sectors we have this other one new tower north and west and then we also have this other additional tower here um, and we're showing it at a NAG 78, which we can't see here because the slider is blocking it. Uh, so from a quick view, you can see all the towers in the area and see which tower and which prediction is going to be the strongest for a given location. All right, so moving in uh, to how to use the tool from an engineering perspective, uh, let me go here. So we have these various radios set up. So you click on a site, you go and look at the various radios. You'll notice here that we are missing one of the radios. We're missing the 180 degree. I can come over here and I can add a radio. It's automatically going to take all of the settings from the last radio. Uh, and so we can just change the name, change the azimuth. And those are the only two that we have to change and hit create. And now we have all four sectors. Uh, we can come in here and we can select all four sectors saying that we these are the ones we want included in the prediction that we're about to select and click the submit job. I'm going to call this new site and 360 degree. To show that we're modeling it with 360 degree coverage um, that will go off that will spin up an instance in the cloud. Uh, we run an AWS. We can go to job management and we can see that that's running. Depending on the range that you select, it could take anywhere from just five to 10 minutes out up to four hours. It's, it's very dependent on the range. Eight mile predictions tend to take about two hours or less. Uh, once that's done, you could come over here, select here and uh, reload the project and that new prediction should show up. Um, let's go in, you, you can add, um, we support from 
2.3 gigahertz all the way up to 7.1 and uh, we support all different manufacturers and so I can I'll choose 5.8 here here's all the various we, we put cambium networks at the top but here's all the various uh, radios that we or antennas rather that we support um, if there's an antenna that you need that you don't see it listed then uh, feel free to let us know uh, especially if you can get the antenna pattern for us we can get it added in to the tool let's go over each of these settings quickly uh, so ap name this is more for your benefit and also for doing exports like bdc exports we have filters set up where you could you know for instance you put in uh, 450i into this name um, and you did it for every single radio in your network that was a 450i then when you do a bdc export you could just collect those 450i's or maybe you know you want to specify that this is a six gigahertz um, then you could filter and be able to apply those for the export um, and only export the radios that you're interested in um, latitude longitude in the case where maybe you have a large building a hospital or something you're using as a tower uh, we have the lat long here at the top that is the the icon that we're going to show on the map but then you could actually put each radio at maybe different corners of that facility to be able to model that and so these are the individual radio latitude longitudes uh, we have frequency of course we have uh, the tx power once we select um, an antenna it will show us our eirp and so you know we know for instance that in the five gigahertz band 5.8 36 dBm is the EIRP, so we can come and back down this transmit power to make sure that we're compliant with regulatory limits. Uh, the range, you can go all the way out to 12 miles. Um, it's always going to run at one meter resolution. I think we're probably the only product on the market that will run out to 12 miles at one meter resolution and have non-line of sight. Uh, just keep in mind, going out to 12 miles will take about four hours it, it it's uh, not trivial um, set the height you can set it to height above ground and then <clears throat> this is really important this is one of the most misunderstood uh, options of the tool is we also have a height above rooftop so as you noticed when I was going through earlier I was clicking on rooftops and it knew the height of every rooftop uh, well imagine that you had a condominium or something that you were installing on the top of uh, using that as a tower imagine it's 10 stories and it's kind of multi-tiered so it's hard to measure to ground uh, you can instead just use the height that's built into the lidar so you could say well we're we're 15 feet above the rooftop um, and then this height above ground is going to be ignored and it will use this value instead and so that's why there's a warning here um, what this isn't it th this is not the height above um, the subscriber module or the, the height above the customer. That's the most commonly misunderstood option here. This is the height above the tallest thing at that point. So a lot of times customers, they'll place the tower in a field. They'll come over here and they'll say something like five feet, thinking that this is height above the customer um, install. Uh, and that's not the case. In fact, if you'll recall, we have this height slider for the customer from zero feet to 80 feet. Uh, so please be careful. Please don't make that mistake. Um, it's a very very common mistake um, but yeah this is if you want to use the height reference and collider instead of a height above ground uh, the azimuth is the bearing uh, what direction where zero is north 180 degrees is south the tilt now this is tilt and not down tilt so tilt and if you hover on this icon it helps a little bit um, a positive value is going to shoot above the horizon uh, towards the sky and negative value is going to shoot towards the ground Additionally, many uh, antennas today have electrical down tilt built into them. That will be included in the antenna pattern itself. So when we're asking for tilt here, we're ask asking only for mechanical tilt. Uh, what is the tilt when it was set up on the tower? Not what is the total you know, tilt based on electrical down tilt and mechanical tilt. You, you don't have to worry about electrical down tilt at all. Uh, and then the another option, sorry, last option of this section is the SM. And so this is the gain of the SM because we're doing signal level in our predictions. We need to know uh, the gain of of your CPE of your SM, uh, and, and so include that gain here. Uh, transmit clearance. Um, the lidar data is very very accurate, and so what we found early on is small obstructions very close to the transmitter would cause enormous shadows as you go farther and farther. So you can imagine. Uh, a guide tower 
Uh, you're mounted 300 feet up. It's a, a taller guy tower, maybe five or 600 feet. Um, the LIDAR would actually pick up, or it does actually pick up the, the guy wires. And, and so you set your transmitter uh, on the guide tower, it would be off just by a little bit, just by nature of, you know, it's very difficult to get exact accurate within meter placement. Uh, and so you would end up almost with a peace sign type of shadow emanating from the tower. And then those shadows get larger and larger as you get farther from the tower. So uh, the obstructions being very close would cause problems and have these, you know, half mile wide shadows as you get to the edge of coverage at eight miles or 12 miles. Uh, and so this TX clearance is saying, OK, well, it, it's just a way that we can say placement can be difficult. Um, we're not doing anything silly here. If you see an obstruction close to the transmitter, close to the AP, go ahead and ignore it within this area. And so this is really important for do, you know installing on water towers. It's very common that you don't install at the top of the water tower, but rather you install around the bell um, and just being a little bit off in your placement you can actually have the radio sitting in inside of the water tower to some extent. So coming in here and, and setting this to 50 feet or maybe even 75 feet um, can save you those obstructions and, and that that hit. Uh, the other thing we have foli foliage tuning. Uh, so if you want if you're going and running scene heat and you find out that scene heat is being too optimistic or too conservative, you can apply tuning. Uh, you'll want to apply it to each individual radio and then you'll want to resubmit a job. So kind of as an example here is I'll apply it to this one radio, make it a little bit more conservative. Uh, these are meant to be pretty extreme steps, so you shouldn't have to go all the way to negative five or positive five. Uh, and then I'm going to come through here, select all of these radios that I want to be included. Uh, actually, as an example, I'm just going to do, I'm going to redo this new tower north and west. So notice I'm not selecting um, one of the radios. Whoops. I'm leaving it out of the prediction. It won't be included. It's complaining that it has the exact same name, and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to say negative one here to indicate that foliage. All right, so that job submitted. If I close this out and go to job management, I can see now I have two jobs running. I can always cancel them here. I guess I could uh, do that here. So it will cancel that job. There it is, it's canceled now, it's not running anymore. Um, so that's adding sites, that's adding radios, running predictions. Uh, one of the neat things about the tool, let me show here, is if you go under um, your project configuration, it's this notepad and pencil. This is where you can add um, users. And so uh, to add users, um, the first thing you'll have to have them do is have a Cambium SSO. The second thing, and this is what everyone misses, um, if I just, you know, do a random, email, it's going to complain. It's going to say unknown user. What unknown user means is that the customer, that user has never logged into Scene Heat before. Uh, it, that email has not been stored in the database. So um, once the customer has a Cambium SSO, they need to go to sceneheat.cambiumnetworks.com and log in at least once. They won't have access to the projects that, that won't have been shared or anything, but once they log in, um, you can then add them to the project. You can add as many people as you want. Whoops. I can get it right here. And you can give them either read, read, write, or admin access. Uh, admin access, of course, has all permissions, ability to add users, make changes uh, to the project. Read, write, they won't be able to add users, but they can make changes to the project, run predictions, those sorts of things. Uh, and then read is just read only. They, they can see the setup of everything, but they can't make any changes. Uh, this is really good for customer service representatives where you don't, have, you want, don't want to be concerned about anyone making a change who um, could affect the project as a whole. So I'll, I'll add that there. You can always you know, change it in the future. Um, additionally, you'll see all of your predictions here. If you want to delete a prediction, here's how you delete a prediction. Um, you can also rename a prediction. I believe it will do kind of a full page update when you do that. Um, 
you can go through here, rename them. Uh, the other thing you'll see uh, an I here, it, you may find that you need to go through and run what if scenarios from an engineering perspective, and you may not want um, customers being loaded on to those what if scenarios. So maybe you say, we have this tower, it's five gigahertz. We're interested in putting CBRS on it. What would coverage look like with CBRS? You can go through and see heat and do that and run the prediction, but you definitely don't want people calling in and accidentally getting signed up for installs on that. And so you can come in here and you can click disable and any uh, read only users will not be able to see those predictions. And so this is the ability to hide predictions from read only users to prevent kind of the uh, CSR aspect of the tool from overflowing to the engineering aspect. Uh, the other thing that you can do that's kind of neat is you click on a prediction and you give us a signal strength cutoff and an install height. So negative 70 dBm, two feet above clutter, which would be two feet above rooftop. We will take that signal, uh, we'll overlay it on top of all of the building footprints in the area, and we'll come back and report how many buildings there are total, and that's total within the radius of the tower. If, if you define you know, an eight mile radius, it's gonna look at all eight miles. If you find 12, it'll look all, all 12. Um, it's going to look at how many of those buildings are covered line of sight, how many are covered non line of sight, and then how many aren't covered at all. Um, and and when we're looking at the rooftop, we're looking for at least three square meters of coverage on that rooftop to consider it to be valid. Um, the, the other thing that's really nice about this tool is uh, it's uh, a true kind of apples to apples comparison as you're trying different different things. And so maybe you're looking at a new tower and you're considering 150 foot rad center versus a 200 foot rad center, or you're considering maybe running uh, CBRS alone um, or CBRS with five gigahertz. You can run all of these what if scenarios and then you can see the difference that each one makes. Uh, and, and so you might find that raising it up, uh, raising the, the height of the install uh, on the tower only produces maybe five more customers that you would cover, um, in which case maybe it's not worth it, especially if you have to pay a, a greater lease fee. So uh, this is identify a pretty neat tool. Um, we can also take these latitude and longitudes of all these buildings and, and we sell those. Uh, we sell them for 10 cents per building. Um, or if you're interested in doing marketing, we can take those and we can uh, convert those to CAS certified addresses. Uh, and send those back to you as well. Those are uh, 40 cents a piece. All right. I don't want to get today into exports too much, but I'll, I'll I'll touch on it kind of briefly. When you're doing BDC exports, uh, basically it's a wizard. It's you're setting up service levels. Um, you're mapping your various service levels to various towers. Uh, you're going to be submitting these export jobs, and, and this is information that we'll be embedding into the polygons that we're going to create. Um, and then you have the ability that you can take multiple exports and merge them together as a final step. Um, also with subscription data, if you are trying to do the BDC submission and you need to submit that subscription data. In general, most billing software will do this for you, but um, if your billing software doesn't, then you can download these templates. It will start asking for information like the latitude, longitude of every customer, the speed, the technology. You fill that spreadsheet out, upload it here, and it's going to go in, convert it to census tracts, uh, aggregate as appropriate, defined by the, the specification, uh, and, and give you uh, a file that you can download and just submit to the FCC. Uh, you can review your subscriptions here, and so uh, have several towers here that have gone inactive. Um, I can come in here, and once I have credits in my account, I can select a credit and either reactivate a site, or I can even extend a site. So let's see, um, this site right here, this new site is going to expire uh, about two months from today. I can actually just extend it, uh, select the credit here, click Agree. And now we see that new site um, won't expire until April of next year. So uh, to get the credits in your account, you have to order through distribution, like you go through a di distributor, place an order, um, and then we apply those credits and, and you can go in and add sites and uh, do, do subscriptions as well. Um, tie the subscriptions in. And I think that is it. 
All right, thanks for watching. Um, if you guys ever have any questions or problems, you can always reach us at seeingheat at campiumnetworks.com. Thanks.